In BIOS, we study the social, ethical, and policy implications of developments in bioscience and biotechnology. And my work centers mainly around neuroscience. I'm interested in taking the tools of social science research and applying them to uh, understand the experience of biotechnologies in everyday life. I'm also interested in the ways in which people themselves think about ethics in the context of biomedical technologies. Sociology broadly conceived has historically been more interested in applying a certain kind of conceptual and theoretical framework to these problems. Um, and what I'm trying to do is develop a certain kind of way of doing work that will feed back into the development of social theory and particularly um, impact policy deliberations. The substance of empirical bioethics is really to say that the kinds of questions we ask about the moral and ethical implications of the use of biomedical technologies um, are, are best answered by asking people about their experiences, that morality is inherently social uh, and a behavioral disorder is inherently a moral problem because behavior is inherently social. So without an understanding of how problematic behaviors arise and persist and are identified and are managed in the context of everyday life, we don't really have a good basis on which to make ethical judgments. So for the past five years or so, I've been working on a project called Voices, which is the Voices of uh, Identity, Children, Ethics and Stimulants. It's funded by the Wellcome Trust. And it essentially grew out of a question, which was, is the use of stimulant drugs um, to manage children's behavioral disorders having the kinds of negative impacts that bioethicists and, and the public have been so concerned about? And again, my interest is in whether there's evidence for these sorts of uh, ethical, negative ec ethical consequences to the use of stimulant drugs. Because if there is, then obviously we need to feed that into clinical practice and into policy. But first we need to know whether there's evidence. So my project has, um, we have interviewed over 150 children in the, both the United States and the UK about their experiences with ADHD diagnosis and their experiences with stimulant medications. Um, if anything, these children are more reflective about their behaviors and the consequences of behaviors and their ability to control their behavior than, than other children because they've been required to think about it. I think ADHD is a real disorder. I think the question is whether or not the way we have of diagnosing the disorder picks up that reality or whether it picks up a, an overly broad spectrum of behavioral difficulties in children. Psychiatric disorders are all about these sorts of difficulties with creating hard and fast categories because uh, we don't have any biological markers yet that allow us to diagnose these disorders. So we're, we have to do it subjectively. And that subjective process is always going to take into account social biases. Biomarkers in psychiatry are one of the more exciting emerging developments. Um, and biomarkers are uh, literally biological markers, so bits of genetic code or a brain scan, um, but also things like heart rate, so physiological things like heart rate or cortisol counts, um, which is a stress hormone. All of these can be conceived of as biomarkers, and the search for biomarkers in psychiatry promises to uh, revolutionize diagnosis and treatment, because if we can find good biomarkers that predict a psychiatric disorder, such as ADHD or autism, 
with a, with a good degree of accuracy or predict how people are going to respond to treatments, then psychiatry will come very far from where it is now. The misconception about biomarkers that is very, very important to uh, immediately nip in the bud is that uh, if you say, well, we're looking for genes associated with ADHD, that means that on the basis of genetics purely, we'll be able to diagnose ADHD. But biomarkers don't work that way because biomarkers are probabilistic in nature. So biomarkers, unless it's a single gene disorder, which is very, very rare, a biomarker will only ever be able to give a probability of a certain kind of outcome. The other important thing to say about biomarkers is that they will need to be combined with the, the social indicators that we know that predict uh, disease outcomes in psychiatry. The idea is that the biological and the social will come together to allow us to give more accurate diagnoses and to predict with greater accuracy how people are going to respond to treatments.